right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. We're getting, we're getting into the end of the year. So the last few catching ups for the year, but he's here with us, Jacob Prash. Jacob, how are you doing this morning? Uh, well, not this morning here. This morning somewhere in the world, but good evening to you. Blessings in Jesus. Wonderful to be with you, even though we're in a very fallen world. And I'm beginning to understand more and more the plea of the martyred saints in Revelation chapter 6. How much longer, O oh Lord? Mm. The world is becoming so wicked by the day. And every phase of society, every phase of government, every phase of religion, every phase of everything, that I believe the true saints of God are going to be focused more and more on the return of Jesus. The faithful church is going to be defined by a longing for his return because it's the only thing going to stop the evil. Mm -hmm. We already have that to some degree where the church is persecuted. They long for Jesus to come in countries where the church is persecuted more than they do in the West. But I think the faithful believers in the West are going to be more and more defined by a desire to see the Lord return because of the wickedness. Mm. Absolutely. And I agree. You know what, Jacob, we hear a lot from parents, hear a lot from grandparents, you know, not so much for themselves, but for their children. They, they can't even raise their children up in the, if you live in the Western world, you can't raise up your children uh, anymore in a godly way uh, because there's so much ungodliness that comes in. And uh, obviously, if you live in a, in, in a persecuted country, that's a different problem. And the Western problem is a different problem that they face there. But um, what would you be your advice in terms of raising kids in an ungodly world, raising grandkids? You have grand, you have a grandson. I have children. There was a reason that Jesus told the women of Jerusalem to weep for their children. Mm. And there's a reason in the Olivet Discourse, although that in large part applies to 70 AD, where Jesus warned about those who were nursing at that yeah. time. Can you imagine a world, and it doesn't take a lot of imagination, where a teacher is going to indoctrinate children at the age of five and six about homosexuality and lesbianism, and a little girl or a little boy is going to say, my mommy told me I was born a girl and God made me a girl. And if you're born a girl, you have to be a girl. And if you're born a boy, you have to be a boy. Oh, and that man. teacher is going to report it to the principal. The principal is going to call social services. Social services are going to call the police. And they're going to try to get a court order to take the children away from the parents. That wow. will happen if they get their way. And they mm -hmm. are going to get their way, certainly, in states like California and New York first. It will come if they have their way. Yeah. The only thing that can stop it is the hand of Jesus. That is how wicked it's become. Yeah, as, as a parent and as a grandparent, obviously, the concern is there. And, um, and, and boy, we need to teach our children scripture. We need to teach our children to pray. The importance of having Christian schools and homeschooling cannot be overemphasized. Yeah. Absolutely. And so if, if parents can get them into homeschool or to Christian schools, support your local Christian schools, support your local home groups, uh, homeschool groups. They're so important. We've been a part of it for a long time. And uh, uh, boy, there's not a, a bigger emphasis today. They are going to dictate curriculums saying that even homeschooling must have this, 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 and this. The most you can, you're going to be able to do most likely legally is, is the following. What Christian schools have done where there's a dictated curriculum concerning evolution, where you yeah. have to teach the evolution as a theory, but then you have to teach creationism as an alternate theory. And you can show the scientific problems with, yeah. well, right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the, the same thing about, about sexual orientation and sexual identity, but it can only be done through private schools, church schools, home schools. The state schools are given over to Satan completely. We have to pray that they get destroyed. Remember, yeah. remember, the school system is socioeconomically outdated anyway. It was made for a manufacturing economy where the teacher was the foreman to prepare the children to work on an assembly line. That's what it was there for, to make robots of a technocracy and a manufacturing age. That is over. Most upstart companies now are cottage industries, more and more work is done from home. Therefore, more education should be done from home. 
Those schools are only there for purposes of social political engineering and to serve the interests of the of the corrupt teachers unions. Not not good teachers, bad teachers. Um, yeah. That's the only reason it exists. This this wicked wine garden woman. It's only there for the teachers unions, and it's there for the globalist conditioning of children. That's yeah. what the schools are for. They're not there for education anymore. If yeah. you want your kid to be educated, pull them out of a state school, of a public school. Yeah, and, no, I, and, and you remember that uh, that that interview uh, from MSNBC, Jacob, where they said we have to get rid of this notion that kids belong to their parents. They belong to all the community. And even yes. Hillary was saying that before. It takes a village to raise children. It's the same same Marxist leftist idea yep. that, that there's no individual. Um, uh, responsibility for your children as a parent it has to be the state the nanny yes. state has to come in well that, that's that's being played out in the school systems and um and, and and you see how some of the teachers at least in the in, in the states a lot of teachers union are extremely leftist extremely marxist extremely anti yes and a political campaign fund for the corrupt democratic party yeah yeah it's crazy um, well, I wanted to welcome everyone. Uh, Jacob's already in high gear. I can already see this is going to be a really good uh, catching up. Jacob's already warmed up and we haven't even uh, hit the five, five minute mark, but I want to welcome everyone and uh, watching us on YouTube, watching us on Vimeo, watching us on RTN, watching us on Moriel.tv, Moriel.tv.org. Um, what else we got, Jay? We got Facebook. We got Rumble. Vimeo. Uh... Vimeo. Uh, and uh, I believe we also have tel Telegram. Telegram, Telegram. Yeah, so we welcome everybody there, and we would like to let you know that we will be having our backstage. Our backstage program will be immediately following Catching Up. Uh, it's part of Catching Up, but just the things we cannot say. we got some videos on, uh, um, on what they're trying to do with our children with uh, Satanism. Some videos are going to be there, uh, and then we're going to talk about the Twitter dump file number two and the progression toward the abolition of preaching the gospel, and uh, we'll talk about those things on Backstage, but we can only do Backstage on certain platforms, Morial.tv, Vimeo, uh, Rumble, and Telegram, I believe those are ones, right? And uh, thank you, Jay. I want to welcome Jay. Uh, so did so well last time we had him on. And um, uh, thank you for being with us, uh, brother. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and Davey and Jonah. So a lot of people that, that uh, put together a lot of effort to get this done. I know Jacob and I are the face, but there's a lot of believers in the background yes. working things together. Uh, and ultimately, the Lord working things together for good. Uh, Jay, I had a question, actually, when, when Jacob brought it up. You're single, right? And, uh, and uh, you don't have any children. And I just wanted to know. From your perspective, your friends and people that you know that are single and are not married and have ch and don't have children, uh, what's their perspective when you see the world as it as it is and unfolding against children and the and the attack on children? Uh, what 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 is the common thing that you hear from your peers and colleagues uh, when they see this and in, in, in a perspective of marriage and getting having children and and having a family when they see this onslaught of evil? When they see this onslaught, um, they're discouraged to even attempt to have a family. They're discouraged to even look for a partner. It's, you know, it's, it's basically, why would you set yourself up to eventually have heartbreak? Because you're right, the world and our society wants to take away your children. It, you know, at a very young age, they want to indoctrinate them. And if you don't get go with the program, they'll they'll take them mm -hmm. so yeah it's very it's 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 horribly discouraging to see this it's for yeah. for a single guy it's like i wonder why i even bothered even having bothered that dream oh man uh, jacob you you grew up in the 60s and, and people thought at some point through the 70s and 80s it was the end you know jesus was coming israel's back in the land was it ever a generation where they they thought they would forego having children and not wanting to get into marriage because of how bad the world would become? Yes, you saw you saw that repeatedly, multiple times with the Jehovah's Witness cult. Okay, they told people not to marry and so forth. You had a phenomena in nine ninety nine, and the oh. years leading up to it, with Pope Sylvester, who said that was the end of the millennium. 
So the answer is yes, there are historical precedents for that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. And then obviously, um, you know, not to let the cat out of the bag, but why is this time different? It's part yes. of what we're going to be working on next year. So um, I want to remind everyone that we uh, uh, you can also listen to Jacob. So it's one thing of watching Jacob, but listen to Jacob. I know he's a good looking guy. People want to see him, but also we want to listen to him as well. And you can catch him on podcasts and uh, um, through Bus 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 Sprouts. Yeah. Through Bus Sprouts, you can find uh, many platforms. He's on iTunes. He's on Google um, Podcasts. He's on Amazon. He is on Spotify. And you can find those on the Memorial website. You can go to the Memorial.tv as well, Memorial.org, Memorial.tv. Find the podcast, and uh, you will be connected to all the different messages. We have Sandy, yours truly, uh, Catching Up is there. Some of Jacob's teaching is there uh, weekly. So we have a full schedule for the month. So December is almost over. January will come out soon. And uh, so we got more things coming up for you guys. And, uh, and you can share, you can share the podcast, you can send them to your friends, to your enemies, and uh, maybe to learn something. And that's a, that's always a good thing to spread the gospel. Jacob, let's catch up. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Jacob, uh, not sure if we should celebrate this, but Zelensky won Times Magazine Man of the Year. Uh, let's not get too excited about that, right? Because uh, many other men and women have won this that we don't really want to talk about, like Hitler, like Stalin, like Greta Thunberg, like um, the, the the Prime Minister of Germany, uh, Merkel, uh, Charles Lindbergh, you know, infamous people have won Time Magazine uh, Man of the Year, but he also won Sexiest Man of the Year, and um, that's a, that's an interesting thing to 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 do that in the middle of a war which has really risen up to a new crescendo. Donetsk has been uh, attacked by Ukrainian drones and missiles into the Donetsk Republic, which has been annexed by Russia. Putin is threatening nuclear war again. So in the middle of all this, he wins, he wins Sexiest Man of the Year, Time Magazine Man of the Year. The war is rising. What a time. Um, wh what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we're looking at a dying magazine. Newsweek is just gone. Um, and the circulation of time has decreased so much it really doesn't matter anymore as a publication. It's of no significance anymore in the global market. It is not a uh, a, a media shaper or a, a popular culture shaper anymore. It just doesn't have enough circulation. Not enough people care about it or read about it. It features on the internet uh, or just technically superior to anything a magazine like Time could produce anyway. Um, not only that, but... Uh, no sooner does the news of the week come out in time that the news has changed by the time the magazine comes out. Uh, only internet can keep up with that. A magazine can't. So Time magazine, magazine is irrelevant. Uh, and therefore, anything it publishes is largely irrelevant now. I wouldn't make too much out of it. But as you rightly point out, some of the most notorious villains in modern history have been on the cover of Time as the man of the year. Not only positive people, but many negative people. So my attitude towards time is who cares? I ignore it, and I think most people ignore it. It doesn't really matter anymore. What about the war, though? I mean, it, it's just like an odd, odd timing again. In the middle of a war, Donetsk yeah. gets hit. Uh, Putin raises up the ante now uh, because they're saying, well, they're using NATO proxy forces to attack now an, an independent republic. It's called the Republic of Donetsk. And um, Moscow keeps ordering more drones to counteract some of the attacks. So it, it just seems like the war is unending. There's no, he says, no more negotiations. There's no off ramp. Are we looking right at from it? the beginning? Right from the beginning, it's been a proxy war. Um, the Ukraines and the Russians, just looking at the two supposed combatant nations, neither one of them have done well. They have both been battered substantially. Neither one have done well out of this war. Finland has joined NATO. NATO has moved further to the east than Putin ever wanted. As a result, his economy, although not undermined, it has in certain sectors been damaged. Um, <clears throat> three quarters of a million middle-class professional people, young men leaving the country. Uh, he's not doing well. 
And it's also a humiliating prospect for Russia. So he's not done well. But the Ukrainians have not done well either. They've lost perhaps 100,000 people or more. Mm-hmm. Nobody Incredible. actually knows. What Putin has done has retrenched his troops to the Dnieper River and is basically dismantling the infrastructure, the utilities, the power grid of the country. That's what he's doing. Moriel has a rescue mission, or a, I shouldn't call it that, a refugee assistance mission to the Ukraine so we run out of Poland. And we just, from Britain, sent over another 250 stoves that are heaters. They, they burn wood. They burn wood, and you can cook on them. We just sent over another 250. Um, because the people are shivering. They don't have heat. They don't have uh, public utilities. They have electricity maybe two hours a day. Yeah, They're suffering terribly. The Ukraine is not winning the war. The Ukraine is being beaten to a pulp. <clears throat> Russia got itself into something it would have been better that it had not gotten itself into. So neither side is doing well. Not only that, when the ground gets cold and these conscriptees into the Russian army are integrated into the mainstream Russian forces, okay. you can expect, you can very well expect a full-scale Russian invasion that yeah. can only be stopped by NATO troops entering entering into Ukraine. But there is no mandate for entering Ukraine. It will be like the war crimes of Clinton, Javier Solano, yeah. Yeah. Tony Blair, and Antonio particularly, and Wesley Clark when they yeah. bombed the Serbs. Yeah. Um, NATO can only attack a country that attacked a NATO country. Well, you had these illegal acts by Clinton and Blair already, um, and by Solano and by Wesley Clark already. Well, the precedent was set then. Now yeah. it'll be another illegal act to have NATO troops fighting in Ukraine. But mm-hmm. there are already NATO surrogates. Western intelligence agencies and NATO are using mercenaries. The Ukrainians are not scoring all those hits and kills on the Russian hardware and ordnance. It's being done by people who are trained by the American CIA, by British MI6, by British military intelligence, and so forth. They're using mercenaries. They're using all kinds of mercenaries. By some reports, NATO is even using Islamic mercenaries. Mm. It, it is not the Ukrainians gaining that victory. It is a proxy war by NATO. The only way out is something negotiated. Now, Putin is the villain. He's a bad man. Zelensky is not a good man. It's just that he's the lesser of two evils. Putin is a bad man, okay? But he's got himself into something. You need to offer him a way out. Now, I'm not suggesting you give him up Donetsk and and these other regions. But you can give some kind of terms, at least for a ceasefire. At least get a ceasefire. Look, Putin is not winning, but either is the Ukraine. And in the long term, Ukraine is paying a higher price than Putin. Not only that, up until now, up until the 5th of December, Putin's economy has not been hurt all that bad, badly as the Western media has reported. It's been hurt, but not nearly all that badly. He's been selling, albeit at a discounted price, the oil to India and to Russia, uh, and to China, rather. And also, he continued selling to Europe, and he will still sell to Hungary and, I think, Austria. Um, His economy is not undermined to the degree the Western media and the American government is trying to make out. Damaged, yes. Hurt, yes. But undermined, no, it has not been. It has not been. People in Russia are paying something of a price, but nothing like the price the people in the Ukraine are paying. Nothing. Nothing. We are not being told the truth by the mainstream media or by the American or British government. And yes, it is a proxy war by NATO. The Ukrainians are not scoring those hits. It is NATO mercenaries. Yeah, no, I agree. Now, uh, let's keep talking about Russia because something uh, of our government here in the States, Biden, uh, recently just made a, in my opinion, a terrible, 
terrible deal. And uh, Brittany Greiner, a, a lesbian basketball player who was detained by Russia because of drug charges coming into the country. Uh, she's been traded, basically a release of her release was traded for, of all people, Victor Bout, which is called the Merchant of Death, a, a arms deal, arms dealer. And uh, to my surprise, uh, Marine Paul Whelan was not part of that negotiation, was never was part of the negotiation by the Biden administration. Uh, does this surprise you, Jacob, that, that, that he did this? Biden is a man with no scruples and no morals whatsoever anyway. And, and, and on top of that, he's half senile. So no, it doesn't surprise me. You've got Paul Whelan, a former Marine, being held probably illegally by Russia for espionage as a political point. OK, but yeah. instead, Biden chose to fight for the freedom and a swap of this notorious arms dealer who supplied radical Islamic terror aimed at killing Americans. And the trouble we went through to get him de deported from Thailand. Yeah. You either keep someone like that in prison or you swamp him for a Gary Powers type swap. Yeah, somebody exactly. Swap. Exactly. Instead. Biden, because of Harris, takes someone only because she is a black lesbian with a wife, only because she's a black lesbian and gives her priority over a patriot. Yeah. The patriot it, it, be damned. The black lesbian who is a, a, a spout of anti-Americanism. Yes. She's a anti, vocally anti-American, black lesbian. Her freedom is more important than a patriot. So yeah. we give away a dangerous arms dealer who's essentially somebody who equips terror. Yeah. For her. A one for one. And, and, one and you see one. Don Lemon and you see the Vance. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see what they're making it a race and a racial issue and a of the LGBTQ issue and all this kind of that yeah. those are their priorities. It's the yeah. same old story. Mm. Yeah, it, it, uh, I watched the CNN exchange with Don Lemon, and they, they were just gloating that uh, a black lesbian is going to be released, a one for one with the terrible criminal and 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 and, uh, and terrorist, and a one for one is is that's going to be the culmination of American history. She's going to come kiss her wife on the on the tarmac, and it's going to be great. We're going to see tell the world who we're all about. Well, on the yeah, other well, hand, I, yeah, is what it's going to be all about is Romans chapter one. Oh yeah, yeah. Even some top Democrats have blasted uh, Biden over this. Even Senator Bob Menendez blasted the Biden over this. It, it, it's not going so well, but I don't think they care because they abandoned Americans in Afghanistan. Uh, I don't think yes. abandoning another American, another patriot, uh, would really mean anything to them. Nothing um, would mean absolutely nothing to Biden or or Joe Obama, as he should be called. Yeah, and even less to Harris. You know, Jacob, had had Brittany Griner been a conservative or a Bible believing Christian, you think she would have been part of that negotiation? Absolutely not. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I figure that. I sense that from the beginning, but um again it's one of those things where you know it's publicity it's it's trying to undermine americanism and patriotism um jacob but have you seen the i mean we talk about war what about the war within the borders of different countries we're talking about us the uk france um here in america i, I mean you've seen uh, we've seen some of the videos that you and i have seen from philadelphia armed guards with ar15s and nine millimeters and Uzis and all that, um, guarding gas stations, convenience stores, um, and Philadelphia of all, you know, well, Philadelphia's gone crazy in Kensington Street, especially uh, in places in New York. They're they're hiring these almost mercenary type security guards. They're not the same securitized uh, security guards that waves you in and and out of uh, whatever uh, situation you may be in. They're not patrolling anything. They literally are armed to the teeth, guarding these stores, guarding the cities, because one police is helpless, hapless, whatever you want to call them. This is this is South American style uh, living now in, in, in the streets of New York, Philadelphia, LA. Of course. 
Well, first of all, the people who live in those cities who vote Democrat don't deserve any better. They got what they voted for. They don't deserve any better. If you're a liberal woman in San Francisco on your way to work and you step through a puddle of urine, but you have no right to complain about it, no right whatsoever, that's what you voted for. That's what you voted for. Um, now, when you have a defunding of the police, when you have prosecutors who won't prosecute criminals, what do people do? They form vigilantes and militia groups to protect themselves because government won't protect them. You think black lives don't matter now? Just wait. These people guarding these petrol stations, filling stations, <laughs> they're going to kill a lot of blacks. Yeah, that, that's, that's, it. that's the amazing thing. These things are in uh, areas, basically Hispanic, Black, um, minority communities. Yep. And well, that's where the crime is. That's where the violence is. And now convenience stores are saying, we're not going to trust the police anymore. We're, we're going to have to arm ourselves. We're going to have to do ourselves. That's right. And boy, is it going to spark something. It, it just kind of take one, one person to be shot on site or something. And, and it's, it's just going to be a, a violent turnout. And well, Black Lives Matter and defund the police has resulted in more blacks being murdered, mainly by other blacks. That's what has happened. It has caused more people, more minorities, especially blacks, to be murdered by other blacks. So black lives don't matter to Black Lives Matter. Defund the police only gets more black people particularly killed. Others as well, but particularly yeah. the people they espouse themselves as being out to help or whose yeah. cause they are trying to advance. Now it's going to get worse. People yeah. will defend themselves. They will have no choice if the government and police will not defend them because their hands are tied politically. But this all is bound up with what Jesus said. Lawlessness will increase. That's when exactly lawlessness right. increases, people make a law unto themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the time of Noah, the Bible tells us there was violence on the earth, Genesis 6. And, yep. and, and I, I think about what Jesus said, it'll be just like the days of Noah, it'll be violence on the earth, just as much yep. as the Nephilim, yep. things that happen with humanity. Uh, Jacob, I mean, you mentioned Black Life Matters don't matter to Black Life Matters. I mean, they're buying up mansions and houses from, uh, I guess, from, you know, evangelists, TV personalities like Sean Bolts are buying huge homes up in the Panga Canyon. And yet black communities end up getting shot, end up getting uh, arrested, end up getting uh, uh, in violence act because their cities have absolutely been destroyed by their own policies. Defund the police, defund the police. That's what they voted for. That's what they got. Again, they have no right to complain. Yeah. I think now, it's a these, tragedy. Yeah. When I see these children in Chicago getting shot on their way to school, black children, I think it's a human tragedy. But it's what their parents voted for. Yeah, black Christians have come out against Black Lives Matters. Pastors and teachers, of course, are saying, of course. this is ridiculous. They're buying up homes up in California. They don't care about children in Chicago or Baltimore. The Panga Canyon, the Panga Canyon. That's where that Clarice Colors lives. The Panga yeah. Canyon. Yeah, <laughs> you you couldn't buy a shack in the Panga Canyon for less than a million bucks. At least, at least a million bucks. Um, now these flash mobs. Um, Walmart CEO, Target CEO, Best Buy CEO, they've all condemned it and come out. Even the Walmart CEO said this is organized retail crime. They take the stuff, they loot the stores. We want you and I watch videos, Apple stores, convenient uh, 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 clothing stores uh, from Washington to New York to LA to your native New York to my, you know, here in Southern California. And, and this say, look, it's gonna, we're gonna close stores and raise prices because we just can't compete. A hundred billion dollar loss, a hundred billion dollar loss per year. It's costing retailers th th this ridiculous things. You can go in there, take the stuff. No one does anything. No one calls the cops. They take stuff, Apple computers, Apple phones, clothing, and they just sell it on the black market. In San Francisco, they wouldn't prosecute you unless the amount you stole is above $900. This is just inviting crime. It's pro-crime. You've got Soros funding. The election yeah. campaigns of people like Krasner in Philadelphia and yeah. Bragg in New York. Yeah. That man is actually trying to actually trying to promote crime. Yeah. 
you know, Chicago got rid of their bail. No ca uh, uh, cash bail is no longer, uh, you can basically, you're free to go. They can't hold you, you're free to go. They can't hold you out of bail in Chicago. California is reducing prison population, letting prisoners go. Yep. And, and they, they, can't, they can't imagine that their crime's going up and they don't know why. If that's what you voted for, you have no right to complain. It's the decent people in Illinois and California and New York I'm concerned for. Yeah. And yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, um, it, it's, it's organized crime, but, you know, I, I guess, you know, small businesses get hit the hardest because of what Amazon of and all these other stores may not, you know, they just go online. It, it, it's like intentional economic suicide. Yeah. Jacob, do you think in some way, and I'm thinking nefariously here, so, so, you know, I'm thinking nefariously, I'll just leave you, start with that, that a lot of this is to promote somehow to track digital payments, somehow to track digital stuff, you have to pay through digital payments now, you can't go to the store anymore and use cash, you have to go digital, and therefore you're going to be tracked by the IRS, you know, part of me thinks, in a lot of ways, it combines, I'm not saying it's purposely done in that way, but it results into that and to funnel people into digital payments. That is a part of it. They want to integrate all of this into digital currency, social credit scoring, and so forth. That ultimately is a, 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 definitely a component of, of what's happening. But you have to understand it within the context of the greater scheme. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It's not a conspiracy anymore. It's just out there. You were, they are trying to initiate a neo feudalism. Yeah. You can't buy things anymore because of the looting. So, therefore, you have to buy them from Amazon online. And you have to use a card to buy it that we can track <laughs> and we can score you. You have to use a digital currency or you have to use some mechanism that we approve of to purchase something that's the only way to do it you'll have to have only online shopping for any thing other than staples or minor minor commodities you'll have to do all shopping online well who's going to benefit from that well people like bezos will benefit well wells fargo bank will benefit well fedex will benefit yeah. i mean we, we know who is going to benefit from it they are just trying to reshape the economy by crashing the old one yeah Absolutely. Uh, Jay, you, you live near L.A. I mean, you're not in L.A., but you live near L.A. You uh, Have you seen some of this stuff? I mean, we're not making stuff up. I mean, it, it's thousands and thousands of videos. We probably could do a whole show on, on just how many videos are out there of, of looting, organized retail crime. Uh, have you seen anything like that in your area? I, I have not seen it personally, but I can tell you just from last night, there was a big story on the local news for people that are bank stocking and basically it's two people working in tandem one yeah. person on the inside of the bank watches who's withdrawing large amounts of cash Ooh. and then they have people that are they text person coming out going with this bag oh, has oh, this much oh, money yeah. and they're met by people right there to grab the cash and what is what is what is the story about it's about you can't carry cash anymore it's not safe oh. Oh, yeah, yes. but this is why we need digital currency. I mean, the anchors were actually saying this. Oh, man, I remember an anchor saying uh, this is why we need surveillance because uh, on the other, you know, another side of the coin, this is why we need surveillance. We need cameras everywhere because the violence is just getting too out of hand. We need to apprehend people. So now you're playing into the, the hand of tracking surveillance and digital currency out of something that is it shouldn't be happening. It wasn't like this before, but they just have allowed violence to, to be unleashed. Yes, uh, especially in the cities like that. So, uh, Jacob, have you seen this? Uh, New York, Hochul doesn't want to let the, its citizens buy arms or body armor. You can, it's, it's impossible to get a gun. So is Canada now, but at least in the states, um, which you have a Second Amendment. I guess it doesn't matter in Hochul's uh, Hochul's world in New York. She is a wicked, wicked woman. Um, I wish her nothing but the judgment of Christ for a number of reasons. And I hope it's swift and merciless, but she's only one of many. To deprive people of body armor, not only can you not have the right to defend yourself from an armed 
but you can't even have the right to defend yourself if somebody shoots at you. It this is, is this is an outrage. This is an outrage. Many of but, the violence, but, but if you voted for her, you should you should be the first justice demands you should be the first one who gets shot. You've seen I'm not the working violence. on you. I'm just saying it's going to happen, and I hope it happens to you instead of to somebody who didn't vote for her. Violence that's coming across the border. It's not only true in the states. It's as true of England. It's true of France. It's true of Germany. Uh, it's Biden here will not visit the border. Of course not. He's, in Arizona. he's in Arizona visiting a plant uh, that manufactures uh, semiconductor chips because that's, I guess that's the new trend now, trying to open up uh, chips because obviously the problem with Taiwan and China. Uh, but he's there. He's only within hours, not even hours, just a couple, yes. maybe an hour away from the border. Uh, but he says he's not going to go to the nacho chip. He says the nano, nano chip, nano. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And he just he's just not going to visit it. No, well, first of all, probably the Secret Service doesn't want him to. It's too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly so. Uh, have you heard uh, cinema? Speaking of Arizona, yes. cinema flipped to the independent. She's becoming an independent. She's not becoming a Republican or a conservative, but an independent. But if she caucuses with the Democrats, it'll probably mean very little. Mm, most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. It has been suggested that it will strengthen the hand of Manchin on a few points. Mm. I don't make, look, I'm glad it happened, but I don't put any great stock or hope in, its, in that it's going to mean anything in the balance in the Senate. The fact yeah. is, under Mitch McConnell, the Republicans lost the Senate. Yeah. And the Republican Party is leading with, with such an unpopular president to have actually lost seats in the Senate to yeah. the Democrats. They've actually lost. Mitch McConnell is responsible and Donald Trump is responsible mm. to pick something like someone like us. Yeah. As much as I like Herschel Walker personally, I like him personally yeah. and he's a great athlete, but he, he was not the most fitting opponent for yeah. Warnock. They could have gotten somebody better. They yeah. could have gotten somebody better. They had somebody better in Ohio. Yeah. Mitch McConnell messed up. McDaniels, that Ronan McDaniel messed Ronan McDan up, and Donald Trump messed up, and yeah. he must assume responsibility for his share of the mess. I mean, but they were talking about it. taking responsibility. I doubt Donald Trump will. As much as I liked him as a president, he's not a good party leader. Most of the senatorial candidates he backed lost. lost yeah, it's um, some real losers. It seemed like he was going for the culture of celebrity. Oh, we'll get yeah, somebody with so the Heisman Trophy. Oh, we'll yeah. get a TV personality like Dr. Oz. That, 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 that that's going to make them more electable. He went for that stuff instead of for ability and ideology. Yeah, yeah. They passed up on, on probably the better candidate they have in Pennsylvania. Um, I forget her name, uh, the lady that was in, in Pennsylvania. She was amazing. She was awesome. Barnett. Bar Bar Barnett? Oh, Bar uh, Barnett. Barnett. Yeah, yeah, Barnett. Yeah. yeah, she should have yeah. been the nominee. Oh, and, she and, should and have been her, the, she, she's a young black woman. She should yeah. have been the nominee. Just her testimony, you know, of being, you know, a, a, a born, uh, you know, and they were going to abort her. Her mom refused to do it. And she she has a PhD. She's grown new businesses, written books. She's a successful story. She has a family. And they still would not pick her. But anyway, instead of her, he gets us. Yeah. A Turkish Muslim. Uh, unbelievable. From another state. Yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter to, uh, you know, Republican or Democrat anymore, but uh, at least some Republicans still hold to to, to certain ideologies and, and truth. But, uh, Jacob, the, the Biden administration just seems to pick, you know, the Republicans pick certain people. The, the, the Biden administration picks, uh, I guess, even worse. Uh, Sam Britton there uh, works for the uh, Department of Energy, who uh, confessed now to stealing women's luggage. This is Sam Britton. Who and he is, still has a job. Yeah, he's been suspended. This is a, if you don't know, he's the kinky, they, them, whatever he likes to be called, um, you know, officially charged, you know, uh, with airport luggage theft twice. This is twice. One's in Minneapolis, one's in Las Vegas. Um, man, this is, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say, except for, I guess he likes women's luggage. I, I don't know. 
Uh, but but somebody in that capacity should have been let go of his uh, of his position. Um, but anyway, that's here in the states. But Germany, France, UK, all having trouble with violence at their border, meaning that you have um, illegal immigration coming in from Eritrea, from different uh, Muslim countries, and they're just simply butchering and raping fourteen-year-old girl in France. Uh, in Germany, sorry, in Germany, another French uh, attack, uh, on and on it goes, the UK, um, it just seems like an unending violence, and there's no politician seems to want to stop it. Angela Merkel helped cause it. And um, Rishi Sunak, no, not going to do anything about it, Germany is not going to do anything about it, Macron, not going to do anything about it. It's just unraveling. not a conservative. He's he's a globalist. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what about you know? This, we used to see this stuff in Latin America. Now it's in different parts of the world. But Latin America is going through some real changes here. I mean, we're going to have to have a, a whole different section on catching up for Latin America. Yes, Brazil is about to go under martial law. If not there already, Peru has just had a violent change of government uh, just overnight. Uh, yep. the, of course, in Brazil, you had the election results that um, some say it was stolen and Bolsonaro is still appealing to the Supreme Court. But now military is involved. They shut down the country, basically. Now people are having to get 15 to 30 days worth of food just to get over, you know, whatever yes. uh, martial law is going to be implemented. Um, Jacob, is this you think Brazil is just heading down this this, this road of, of violence and destruction uh, because they just want to take down probably the most prosperous economy in the, in South America. They seem to be not as left wing, not as Marxist as other countries. Most of the National Assembly are not left wing. It was only yeah. the new Presidente who is. Yeah, and he is a favorite son not only of China, but he's a favorite oh. son of the Biden administration. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah, that tells you something, isn't it? That tells you something. Now they were they're involved in BRICS. I don't know what's going to happen now, and I don't know how you know that, that jeopardizes anything in their economy. But it's not looking good. I mean, we're talking martial law. We're talking an incredible amount of violence and uh, military on the streets, shoot on sight. That's been their orders. So um, you know, I, I know tra narco traffickers have been very happy that Bolsonaro lost. So I wonder if they're going to do anything in relation to more violence in Brazil. Okay, the more instability there is in Brazil, the worse the, the economy is in China with the riots and so forth, the protests, and the worst the impact of the Ukraine is in Russia. And South Africa is a basket case anyway. Okay, the better it is for the dollar. It prevents the BRIC from becoming a viable competitor to the dollar and the euro. Okay, um, That's interesting. that is the upside. Yeah, the downside is obvious. Yeah, it, it, global recession. Even BlackRock admitted today, uh, it unlike any other. He says it's it's a BlackRock, the group. Uh, it, recession is it's it's inevitable. Depression could be. Uh, central banks can't stop it. They said Federal Reserve can't stop it. It is something that as, as, as you're trying to deal with inflation, you're going to cause major recession. Um, yes. Jacob, I, I mean, they're, I would say they're one of the ones that caused all the problems. They but now the ones coming out and say, well, it's not us. It's the Federal Reserve. It's not us. It's the Central <laughs> Bank. Um, the global economy, they said, has entered into a phase of volatility. That's correct. Not the U.S., not just the U.S., but the world economy. Correct. The global economy. Yeah. Uh, unpack that a little more, Jacob, in light of China's, uh, you know, uh, recent uh, uh, not only lockdowns, but uh, tremendous amount of uh, protests and violence. In fact, even Apple is shifting product out. They're not going to make it in China. They're going to make it in Vietnam and India. But as China's production goes down, exports are going down, the economy of the world begins to shake. Absolutely. You can't have the second... In a globalized economy, you can't have the second biggest economy going the way China's going without ramifications globally for other countries. That's absolutely for, for sure. But it never China never should have, have gotten this much leverage in, in the global sphere anyway. 
Um, but it did. Now, in the power game, India will have a larger population than China. It's more English speaking. It's somewhat more democratic, although it certainly has its own problems, humongous ones, including ones that China doesn't have. Um, but more scientists and engineers per capita than any other country. And border tensions with China. There have been at least five military conflicts between India and China since the end of the Second World War, or since uh, China invaded Tibet, annexed Tibet. So China fears India as a potential long-term rival. This also casts a shadow over BRICS. Um, for one thing. But going beyond that, Vietnam hates China. They hate China. They've never been friends. They stuck together against the Americans and Australians during the Vietnam War for their own interests, but they never liked each other. The Americans and Australians no sooner left Vietnam than China and Vietnam had a war. <coughs> they don't like each other and they never will. But Vietnam is, again, another country that is a potential economic threat to Chinese dominance. Hmm. China took it from Japan. Now it's being taken from China. Yeah. And there's nothing China can do to stop it. No. Not only no. that, it's happening at a time when the party is in danger. The party stayed in power because of the Confucianist mentality of the East. Yeah. In Confucianism, the people are willing to tolerate a lack of democracy like they did in Singapore as long as they're prospering. If the government brought about an economic environment where they were prospering, they didn't care too much about politics and freedom. They did, but not to the same degree as a Westerner would. And that's just Confucianism. Confucianism accepts a benevolent dictator, okay? Confucianism accepts a benevolent dictator philosophically. But now that the Chinese economy is no longer delivering those things. Yeah. There's a problem. It's the shadow banking. It's the real estate. It's the debt, both government, oh, public sector debt, debt and huge. but but the, but the, the real the company debt in China is double what it is in Western countries. Double, yeah. not just real estate. Double. It you know they may have a handle on government debt. And they may have a handle on private personal debt, but not on company debt. It's out of control. Okay. Yeah. On top of the shadow banking, on top of the real estate bubble. Okay. So it is now imploding. It is imploding. And the party needs to keep power. Understand the reasons for the lockdowns. We've said this before, these lockdowns. One, the amount of hospital beds and national health facilities in China would be inadequate. It would be over swamped, as it already was over swamped in Hong Kong, if the COVID spread to the degree it did in the West. That's the first problem. Second problem.
problem that people are ignoring is, okay, China eclipsed Japan, but Japan is still the third biggest economy. The size of the, the deficits in Japan, the size of the national debt in Japan as a percentage of GNP is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Some people say it could be pushing 400%. Oh, man. Yeah, no wonder. I mean, Japan has been in a perpetual stagnation for quite a number of years. And both Japan and China have a demographic problem. Yeah. Immigration, albeit much of it illegal, has pr protected the United States from the demographic time bomb. But it's not going to protect China or Japan. No, they don't have, yeah, they don't have this that. idea of the Asian century and Asia is going to take over and it's going to be what the West used to be. That's not going to happen. Mm. Definitely with their social credit score and system and, and, and their, of course, their dictatorship. But now, Jacob, they've been pushing CBDCs quite a bit for a long time. And uh, it seems that CBDC may be a way out for these uh, the WF. The, the 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 banking the IMF to in order to control and bring stability they say stability to their debt problem now in Nigeria just recently Nigeria two hundred and twenty five dollars cash per week is all you could withdraw similar things have happened in other countries you're seeing less and less cash available uh, cash is not it, it, by policy you can't withdraw certain things Australia is launching their new uh, digital identity mobile app. Seems the world's going that way in terms of economy, identification, health record. Uh, what, what do you think, Jacob? I mean, how close are we heading down this road where you basically won't have cash, you will be tracked, you'll be surveillance, and all of your identity and information will be stored in some kind of cloud uh, for you to show, you know, whoever forces are going to be asking you to show. And uh, the, the, there'll be no more hiding from, uh, especially those who are against the government. And that's the biggest part, isn't it? If you're against the government. Yeah, but it goes one step beyond that. Nobody can buy or sell unless you take the number of the beast, the mark of the beast number of his name. All of these things are heading for Revelation chapter 13 rapidly. Very rapidly. Very we rapidly. Say, yeah, we used to say, oh, it's coming, it's coming. We might you know, say, well, you think, first you went from precious metals. Then you go from precious metals to promissory notes saying that the government has the gold in Fort Knox. Then Nixon defaults on the dollar. So now it's not based on gold. It's based on the promise of a corrupt government. Yeah. Then it goes from that into, and the, and the reaction to that, of course, was Bitcoin and so forth. Yeah. And, and then it goes from that to digital currency, where it'll simply be electronically controlled. By international agreement. Yes. It, it, it's with no relation to monetary mineral value or precious That's metals. Right. It'll just be electronic gold. You yeah. can see what it says. And James, the gold will rust. Yeah. <laughs> A non-corrosive <laughs> metal. Metal will rust. <laughs> it won't mean anything. Yeah. These people are telling you to buy gold, buy gold. Look what it says in James. It won't be worth anything. It won't be exchangeable. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, this is definitely in the plans of the World Economic Forum. But recently, another part of their agenda, which is the WHO, the, 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 the World Health Organization, they just recently had a meeting. It ended on Wednesday for three days about the new pandemic treaty. You know, and uh, yep. it, it, most people consider it a, a blatant money grab, basically power and money. That's all. And uh, they discuss certain things. But one of the things they discussed was China and the way China has handled uh, the reason lockdowns. And th that's a big thing, is it? Um, I mean, are we going to see this type of lockdowns in the West? We've already seen attempts at it, particularly in countries like Britain and Israel. We've already seen dry runs, dry run attempts at it. Not to the degree in China, but certainly yeah. to a degree. Yeah. You and know, don't forget, we had bank grabs, just government taking your money from the bank in Cyprus. Yeah. <laughs> once the precedent is set, once it happens somewhere, 
and they yeah. get away with it. And it's going to happen again. Yeah, bail-ins, basically. The, the banks can take your retirement savings. Uh, another thing that they discussed, Jacob, not at the WHO, uh, but at the World Economic Forum level, was the climate change lockdowns. So this is a newer thing. Yep. Not so new if you've been watching Catching Up with Jacob. We, you heard us talk about it for the past couple of years, is the fact that once they've done the lockdowns, there's a precedent set. And yep. uh, that's very, and, and, and it wasn't even our conclusion. They said it. You know, it was so wonderful not to have people flying and driving and, and polluting the air. They said, why don't we have climate lockdowns, climate change lockdowns, where you basically can have a, um, people can monitor the amount of carbon in the air and they can say, this city is yep. too dangerous. This city has too many emissions. We have to shut them down. And now they have this concept of 15 minute cities in which one of them, it's, it's Oxfordshire County, in which they've agreed that everything will be available within 15 minute walk or a bike ride, but you shouldn't use your car. And if you do use your car to leave the county, we're going to have to track you and you'll be given permission to come back into the county. Uh, th this is uh, this is next level dystopian ideas. Uh, 15 minute cities and you need permission to drive your car. Uh, but this is climate lockdowns and they 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 were espousing it in different uh, cities. Yeah, you know, and it'll always be places with low pollution like Oxfordshire. <laughs> it'll not be China where there the, is the most pollution. It's yeah. just complete hypocrisy and it's not about the environment. Yeah, 15 minute cities. I mean, it sounds like a nice idea, 15 minute walk, but what if you need to leave somewhere? Visit your family. Yeah, Jacob, you travel a lot. You used to travel a lot more. Uh, 15 yep. minute cities. I mean, it's, uh, France wants to do it, Paris, Barcelona, LA, Tokyo. Um, and you're right. Yeah. Not really cities are they won't cities. do it in Shanghai or Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's really about control. And the, the European Commission is very much in favor of this. Uh, so is in the UK as well. So it's uh, climate lockdowns. I, I guess Neom is based in, based on this as well. Yeah. Neom, yeah. The, the, on it, yes. is completely based on this 15 minute walk to get everything you need. So these so, smart cities, these smart cities. Oh, look at that. Um, and, and, and Neom is just one of the cities that they want to build. It's just it's not the only one, but it's the, it's it's the, it's going to be their flagship. These smart cities. Um, I guess it goes back to what Google wanted to do for a long time. Jay is they they have these cities that call Google cities that they want to build, where you're going to have Wi-Fi everywhere you go, and everything will be uploaded to the cloud, and and you won't need to carry IDs. And and basically, what they wanted is no laws certain laws of that country wouldn't apply if you live in that city so climate change lockdowns all those things will be uh i, I guess will be a given if you live in those cities and uh but no you don't human have rights to. yeah exactly <laughs> notice all of these things require the abrogation of democracy yeah but secondly what was feudal europe like hmm. Most people never traveled more than 25 miles from where they were born. Mm. A hyper-localization. Until the Crusades, most yeah. people never left the area they were born in. Wow. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I mean, it's there's... feudalism. They want feudalism. Of course, the privileged, the privileged, of course, will be flying in executive jets. <laughs> Uh, it's a good time to let everybody know. Please send in your questions. We're on Rumble. Is that we're taking questions on Rumble, right, Jay? Okay. Yes, sir. And, uh, and we will be uh, asking Jacob questions after we're done with the topic. So start sending your questions in, and we're getting closer and closer to backstage. So um, this topic is going to be, uh, we're going to play a video regarding the Satan Club uh, on backstage, but we're going to talk about it here and then we'll put the video um, um, backstage. But uh, Jacob, you heard about this uh, satanic club. They, yes. they're, they're rising up in different parts of the country here in the States. Not sure how it is in other countries, but at least in the States, uh, they want the freedom of religion to express that Satan is not a bad guy and you he's just a misunderstood man or being. And uh, you'll be happy at their Satan's club, uh, not only in Virginia, California, this one in particular, Illinois, um, we put out a, uh, Moriel put out a, uh, a petition 
you can go on Moriel on Facebook and on the website, and you can sign a petition saying we don't want kids to be indoctrinated with Satan and uh, in his teachings, uh, because it's being targeted to five year olds, five to 12 year olds. And uh, boy, this, I mean, Jacob, but this is blatant. I mean, it's not even, you're not even, in, not even hiding it in occult symbolism or anything like that. You're just simply saying it's Satan. He's misunderstood. He got in trouble because he asked questions. So he's a, he's a seeker of truth. He's a seeker oh. of truth. And, and so th there you have it. According Doc, to spokesman yeah. for the, for the Christian after school Bible clubs, which likewise meet in schools after school hours <clears throat> and they had to fight court cases to be able to do it that the protests to stop the satanists are going to create a condition where school boards will say that's it no more bible clubs either we can't discriminate we're not going to have any more use of school properties for any religious purposes as a way to close down the bible clubs that is essentially what it's going to come to. Incredible. It's all the devil. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the satanic clubs. And if you look at what these, these Satan clubs are telling kids, the devil's not real. Yeah. You know, what, what, Satan has always wanted people to believe he doesn't exist. <laughs> that is great as lie, isn't it? His greatest lie that there's no hell and that he doesn't exist. Uh, but you see it. You see it in media. You see it in, in, in Disney has blatant Satanism now. Little Demon, one of their one of their shows. Uh, I was I wanted to ask Jay some of that because he's worked on on films exposing the occult and things like that. But uh, Jay, is it blatant now? I mean, is it is just hands off, gloves off? We're going to tell you who we are, what we're doing, and and, and people are not going to resist. They're going to embrace it. There was, uh, I want to say, pre two thousand, kind of a a veneer where they would hide it. But it seems as they've um, as society has disintegrated as far as morals, values, and and faith, it's it's become the forefront. And now they they don't hide it at all. They celebrate it. Ooh. They celebrate the identity of being in rebellion. Yeah, yep. I mean, with uh, with you know. Uh, you have NBC, I believe, does a show called uh, Lucifer, which is absolutely just over the top. Can you, you imagine know? that? One? That one's like has one of the highest ratings. People just love that show. It's got four seasons or something like that. A show I, called Lucifer. Yeah. Yep. It's highly popular. And it's and it what it does. It does exactly what most Satanists want to do. They want to paint Satan as this, you know, character that you can relate to. This one that. Is rebellious against authority. I mean, that's what that's what they want. They want you to rebel against moral standards, parents, and authorities to the point where you know you're you're basically saying Satan's a good guy. And yeah, it's misunderstood. <laughs> it's it's the, unfortunately, if you look at like with the track record of Disney since then, most of their shows it, it incorporates some form of a parent not approving like i could go down the list i'll start with rat tattoo it's one of my personal disney favorites okay. all right the rat wants to cook wants to hang out with humans the father does not want that does everything to dissuade him but yet he rebels from okay. his father from his father's you know you know basically basically his rules and he is celebrated and becomes the star and becomes mm -hmm. everybody's proud of him the little mermaid Rebels against her father, makes a deal yeah. with the devil, literally. Yeah. <laughs> goes and becomes celebrated and, and marries the prince. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. It's all about questioning what God has put in place or yeah. what has God put in place in the stories and doing your own thing. Yeah. And with Marvel, it becomes even more egregious because now what you have in Marvel is you have the celebration of mythological characters who are basically demigods. Mm. Harry Potter is the same. Yep. With so this, take, you know, all that. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. Hey, Jay, you worked on some of the stuff already with the, with the films and, and other things, and especially with good fight ministries and stuff like that. And they, they've done a great job in promoting uh, and, and exposing, I should say, 
promoting Christ, but exposing these things uh, that are there. And it is really a war on Christians because really who's the only one that they that cares about what we teach our children in a sense of Christian morals and ethics and, and biblical uh, in biblical doctrine will be Christian. So this is definitely a war on, on Christian, on the culture, which is, has been a Christian culture, Christianized culture, I guess you could say. And uh, now it's just simply going to be trampled under the feet of uh, paganism, myths, Satanism. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious. I mean, if anybody wants to think about that, we, we used to say, well, that's you remember the old record stuff, you know, where people say, well, if you spin the records backwards, it's, you know, back masking. And, and, yeah. And, uh, oh, you're making stuff up, all that stuff. Now it's like, no, it's, they, they definitely say Lucifer. They definitely say Satan, but they changed the definition somewhat. And they said, well, he just got in trouble because he asked questions. See, boys and girls, you always need to ask questions and, and, and don't be afraid to ask questions, you know, and, and that's how it's being promoted now. Uh, to our children and to our in, in our schools now and 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 and, and basically social media and um, movies entertainment. The occult is promoted, and any type of reference to God or theology is is strongly strongly opposed. Mm. And from everything is always magic, rather than rather than a blessing, rather than a miracle. No, it's it's magic, and there's there's a price to be paid with using the occult always. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's right. In, in fact, that that's uh, that Disney show, Little Demon. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the mom who gets impregnated by Satan, and by they Lucifer. have this. Uh, yeah, by Lucifer, they have this child, and that becomes a little demon. He doesn't know, or he or she, I forget if it's a girl or a boy, but um, doesn't it's a know. Girl. That, the girl yeah and then meets satan and then he said like, oh yeah i'm your dad and you know this is what you need to do it's kind of like an antichrist figure and he kind of gets to know like the real powers and and it's obvious because they see it right there it's uh, uh the symbolism is there you yeah. know the program and all that so it is crazy i don't even let my children watch anything like that uh, even closely related to that or even closely related to disney stuff because it's just it's gone to it's gone crazy you know it's it's gone into complete oblivion well, also, like, uh, you know, Jacob mentioned, it's it, if it was just Disney, it'd be one thing, but it, it's it's universal um, with uh, the Harry Potter, Harry Potter series. And, um, you know, uh, you, you can go down the list. There, there's always some marketing of the occult in some yeah. fashion to our to, to specifically children. Yeah. And it's not it's not even to adults. It's literally focusing in on children yeah it, it's by far the most egregious attack that as as, as, I've been, as i've been alive for 40 some years is the most egregious attack on children blatant attack on children i'm sure jacob can tell us more uh but i, I think he's never seen anything quite like this i mean we we're talking last week about it week after week i mean we talked about the balenciaga situation that's gotten even worse now it, it's 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 like it's 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 now um not just media but it's also clothing it's also fashion a lot of these fashioned um these fashion groups these fashion uh uh brands are heavily involved in some kind of occulticism yes yes i think yeah. it's just pop culture and culture mainstream culture in general their agenda is is focused towards moving away from traditional values in in all aspects and it, it goes along kind of with uh, their agenda of pushing the LGBT agenda, you yeah. know, on children, that's to, to say, um, you know, you define who you are. It's not some person in, in the garden that gave you a specific role. It's you, you know, it's, <laughs> it's that lie. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, friends of mine that got involved in some kind of a cult is really, was through the same thing. It was through media. It was through books, and um, and, and you know, there's, there's been wonderful testimonies of believers that have come out and said, "Look, this is how I got involved. Ex Satanists, ex people in Wicca, and they, 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 they of course, they, 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 they're now believers in in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're promoting the gospel, and they're saying, "Look, this is definitely a blatant attack on our our children. Uh, keep them, keep them, teach them Scripture, teach them Bible." And um, and I think it's important for Christians to, 
you know, really consider their entertainment now and, 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 and opt more for, I don't, I don't consider the Christian entertainment necessarily something good all the time, but something that is good, something that is godly, something that is noteworthy, something that is praiseworthy, says Philippians 4, meditate on these things. So there's scripture, Bible stories, Bible reading, um, you know, teaching them apologetics, how to, how to defend the faith and how to know that your faith is true and real. Uh, I think we have to spend more time on that with our children than, than just, you know, allowing them free reign, you know, with whatever it's on the media, because a lot of it is just heavily, heavily uh, influenced by a cult, if not right, outright Satanist, you know, Satanist yeah. um, is promoted there. So um, I once thing. heard a pastor say, and it was, it was during, it was talking kind of along these lines. He said, um, we do not, you know, I, in the Bible it says we do not wrestle with uh, flesh, yeah. but spirits and powers of the air. That's right. So he, he was like, I want you to really focus on that phrase, pow, uh, princes and powers of the air. Who rules the air? That would be, that would be the prince of darkness. And, Satan, yeah, Satan for sure. And what, what is, what is being put into the air? What is on air? as far as tv as far as media what yeah. what is being put on air and right. it's it's always a love story with him yeah yeah that is true it's it's somehow manipulated into believing that satan is a not a bad guy and and in the denial of that he exists jacob was right by the way if you don't see jacob on it's just jay myself he's having computer problems so He'll be back in just a few minutes. So uh, we're not just killing time, but we're waiting for Jacob to get to the questions. But we are discussing something that's very important, which is really the indoctrination of children in our society, how to raise godly children in a godless world. And um, obviously, if, you, you know, if you're a parent, or if you're a grandparent, or if you're uh, a young person yourself, let us know. Put, put that on the chats. Put that on the questions. And uh, we'll, we'll get to ask Jacob these questions, but if you have any, any insight and thought regarding what we're talking about, it'd be great to hear, uh, because obviously people have lived through some of this, some of them have a great testimony, and we talked about that, great testimony, they came out of that lifestyle, they were promoted by their parents or, or someone in their family, and the Lord got them out of there, the Lord got them out of there, and, and, and it's, it's a heavy thing, because it, it is a spiritual battle, it is no joke, it is a very, very heavy spiritual battle and i think uh you know jacob's got a good study on ephesians 6 the armor of god that we have to put on maybe next week we have to put on sure. um yeah that, that would be really good for people to know the spiritual warfare ephesians 6 and um one thing for sure is we talked about the war in christianity but look at this story uh the, in the uk a prosecutor called the bible passage no longer appropriate for modern society now, there's a whole backstory of this and i'll try to uh, I try to be succinct in this. It was a street preacher. His name is John Dunn. I think Jacob's heard of him by, in the UK. And he's a street preacher and he preached the gospel. He preaches the gospel. And he he mentioned to a couple that was walking down the street side by side, hand to hand, says, uh, are you guys sisters? He asked the question. And he says, no, we're not. We're, we're in a, you know, a same sex relationship. And he went on to quote 1 Corinthians chapter 6, which is those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a well-known passage and one that we use, you know, to show that God, what God thinks of homosexuality in, the, in scripture is sinful. Uh, that practice of it is sinful. So these two women basically pressed charges against him. And the cops came and they arrested the, 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 uh, the Christian, the Christian preacher under the, I guess you could say, um you know he was uh violating the peace he was shouting he was screaming they said and he was quoting this abusive and threatening language to these women which wasn't even true he just asked the question and basically uh told them what the scripture said but the crown uh the, the crown prosecution service which is cps uh basically we're going to try him for disturbing the peace and hate crimes speech is speech hate hate speech and uh, they, they were able to drop the charges because I guess the women never showed up to testify. Uh, but one of the things that CPS said, the Crown Prosecution Service said, which was the most, probably the most indicative of all this, that the Bible is offensive and it contains illegal speech, which should not be shared in public. And uh, this is at the end of the day, they said that this 1 Corinthians 6, 
it is no longer appropriate in modern society. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, this this is this is crazy. This is a crazy clown world we live in, where the Bible is offensive, but uh, a gay pride parade with half naked men walking down the street that's perfectly acceptable and normal yes. yeah i mean what world do we live on yeah. <laughs> uh, i guess we can jump right into the questions we got a few minutes with jacob let's jump Go right ahead. let's do it let's do it david you got the questions make sure to that? get uh that first question uh from uh yeah let's do that adams thank you brother thank you so much uh let's do that uh jacob this comes from a pastor in florida who wanted yes. to ask you this question. Uh, the question is, is the beast out of the sea in Revelation 13, looking back at a single shot of all the four beasts of Daniel 7, or is it just looking at the fourth beast of Daniel 7 with simply the characteristics of the previous three? Uh, okay, basically most, what's most important to understand is it is not the second statue or beast in Daniel that's most important. It's Daniel chapter 2 because that is where the image was worshipped. It is the worship of Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's image in chapter 2 that is most important, and it's a singular image. Additionally, the dimensions of the image in Aramaic are, are play on 666 in, in, in the second chapter of Daniel. So it's that is what prefigures Revelation 13 more than the others. Now, the others do come into play. There is a correspondence but it is primarily a, it's something singular. Now, what we also know is the four empires will have concurrent existence. For instance, Peter calls Rome Babylon. The mystery religions of Babylon existed in Rome, okay? The, they found their way through, through, through Pergamum in Asia Minor into Rome. Okay, the Persian Empire existed in the first century. It was still there. Uh, they held off the Romans for 300 years. <clears throat> um, this was more important than the first century before Christ, but it was there. The Persian Empire was there. It was then called uh, uh, Parthia, 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 Parthia. And you see Jews coming from Parthia in the book of Acts chapter 2 on Pentecost. So Parthia was there, that was Persia. <clears throat> and then of course, the G Roman Empire was not Roman, it was Greco-Roman. It was specifically Greco-Roman. So they were concurrent. I'm down to 1% battery now. I'm gonna be dropping dead at any second. Okay, no worries. Just uh, finish your thought, Jacob. So essentially, we need to look at Revelation 13 you can't separate the Antichrist from his image. His image reveals about him. And the Old Testament picture of his image is Daniel 2. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very, very good. Uh, maybe we'll get one question. Is Jacob, do you see the CBDC control all the banking by 2025? I couldn't set a date, but it's heading that direction. Is there any similarities between the last seven years of human history before Jesus comes and the seven years of the Midianite enslavement of Israel before Gideon came? Yes, typologically, yes. Okay. Uh, when will there be an alternative to PayPal to support the Ministry of India? We have dropped PayPal due to its policies. I guess that's a question for David Lister. <laughs> yes, yeah, a question yeah. for David Lister, but well, we are well, aware of the problem. Yes, we're aware Jacob's working on it diligently. We are going to have something, uh, an alternative to that. In both Old and New Testament, many people had their names changed. Is it possible that a mid-trib that the Antichrist person will have their names changed by Satan and the false prophet with the new name beginning with the name, uh, with the name being 666. That could be theoretically possible because Antiochus Epiphanes had, his name was Antiochus Epiphanes, but he was Antiochus IV. So right. um, we deal with this a bit in the book Shadows of the Beast. We deal with it okay. a, a bit in the books of Shadows of the Beast, where these villains have more than one name. Yes, okay. yes. Get a hold of that book. Absolutely. Uh, Jacob Peterson says, Peter says the verse, the meek shall inherit the earth, means becoming capable of being dangerous and then learn self-control around that. 
Is this any sense accurate? Meek is, is knowing how and when to use power. Yes. It is, not, it is not using power simply because you have it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So learning self-control. Is yes. This okay. Very good. Uh, Jacob, now, now that the BRICS dropped the U.S. dollar and it's a standard, we owe China unbelievable amount. Will this default our loans? Don't forget, China has such debt of its own. And these things are so integrated. It is not just, if, even if China did that, it wouldn't help China long term. Got it. Could you, could it. you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, uh, now the BRICS has dropped the dollar as a standard. Uh, we owe China an unbelievable amount of money. Will this default our loan? No, no, that would not affect the loan. No. Okay. If they, went, if they went to a different, they would. The currency would still have to be repayable in dollars, so it wouldn't. Okay. Uh, Jacob, believers sold their belongings in X. Uh, can you expand on how to foreshadow plays out again, maybe in the near future? Oh, and we lost Jacob now. Okay. Well, that's all right. We knew that we had a little bit of time. So we're actually going to save those two questions for next week. We're going to save those two questions because they're good questions, by the way. Thank you so much especially the one about the, the, the image and, and actually the pastor that sent in that question was very good. Uh, all the questions are excellent. The, 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 the more biblical ones and actually the ones, they're all biblical, uh, but the one that referred to scripture and the ones that referred to the events going on in the world. I, I wanted to do something um, a little bit different. We just, we're, we're going to cut it short today because of, um, you know, Jacob's not with us, but I did want to play uh, for those who are still on and those who are still with us. Um, we're not going to have necessarily backstage but maybe we should have a backstage with this video. What do you think, Jay? I, I think we should quickly go to backstage, which okay. I, I will facilitate that. Let's do that. Uh, and then that. we'll we'll play that and we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Please pray for Jacob. I mean, he's about to uh, put that uh, that computer to rest <laughs> at some point or another. And it's uh, uh, I don't think that computer is going to be on tomorrow. Uh, so he's going to have to get a new one. So please pray for Jacob and get him back on for tomorrow and obviously next week uh so let's real, do that Jay. let's jump over to uh, back real quickly i just would like to make a correction i am not above making mistakes uh the pastor was not in florida but actually in uh london uh oh. in england so oh, in fact okay. let me just let me go ahead and correct it correctly yeah he's in england on stoke on trent stoke on trent i i, I know where that is yeah uh -huh. so uh okay Thank you for sending that question uh, for the pastor sent that question. And uh, uh, we love it. We love it when everyone participates, has questions, sends comments in. So if there's any interesting comments, we want you to, you know, we, you want us to read, we definitely would read it. And uh, not only the questions, but the comments I think are, are, are important because they're so, I mean, I got to tell you, Jay, there's uh, with Moriel and CCOD and, and many other people that watch, uh, there's been some wonderful believers that have great insight in scripture. And I have actually learned from even the comments that they made because they asked a question or made a comment and it made me go back to scripture, look at it and read it and go, wow, it's right there. So, absolutely, um, you know, we're not the Pope. We're not infallible. We can learn. We can still uh, apply scripture to our lives and especially comes from other believers. And so we appreciate those who watch and send their comments and questions. And uh, unfortunately, Jacob couldn't, he loves to be on for backstage. It's like one of his favorite parts and questions. His computer just died. So we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna have to say uh, good night to Jacob. Get to bed early, and we're gonna switch over to backstage. So get to backstage, right, Jay? Where yep. are we at? Where are we gonna be in backstage? We're gonna be Rumble, and we're gonna be Vimeo, and of course, Morial TV. Get to Morial TV and Rumble and Telegram. Telegram as well. Yeah, yeah and Vimeo, and so jump over, jump over from YouTube and Facebook. Because uh, some of those things we can't talk about. We're going to play a video pretty soon uh, that, um, boy, they went through a lot of work to get that video done. I mean, they I got did. a long, month, a long video for what they were doing. And uh, we want to talk about that um, and make sure people understand what they're up against. Because this was literally promoted for children, literally promoted for children. And I um, uh, want to make sure that we get that on. Um, people to watch because it's 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 egregious i mean 
and I don't know. Should we play that New Zealand? I think the New Zealand one. We should play that one too. We should play that one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah, um, I would like to do that. Um, All right, I'll switch us to backstage. <laughs> 